Hello students. In this video, we are going to continue with chapter 8 motion and learning outcomes of this video are based on the uses of graphs. Learning outcomes of this video are very simple. Okay, they are based on uses of graphs. Let us see which, what are they. First, what does slope of ST graph give? What does slope of VT graph give? What does area under VT graph give? So these three are the learning outcomes which you are going to achieve after this video. Now before we try to achieve this, let us see the general uses of graphs. Now have a look at these important graphs. This is ST graph. This is, this is a graph, darker line. Now from this graph, we can say that as time passes, the distance remains zero. It means, we know that distance remains zero means position of a body is not changing with respect to time with the surroundings. So we can say, this is a case for a body at rest. Similarly, when we consider VT graph, we see that as time passes, again V value remains zero. So if speed remains zero, when time passes, that is also the case for a body at rest. So we can say this graph is for body at rest. Now if I consider this case where the graph is a straight line inclined to time axis and it is ST graph. Whenever this graph is straight line inclined to time axis, we can say equal distance is covered in equal intervals of time. And this is a case when the body is in uniform motion. So we can say this ST graph is for uniform motion. Here we have a VT graph where when time passes, the velocity or mag velocity's magnitude or speed value remains constant. This is a case again speed is constant when the body is in uniform motion. I am interchangeably using the word magnitude of velocity because we know that we are always considering uniform motion or any motion along a straight line unless specified. So speed remains constant in uniform motion. So from here we can judge that this VT graph is for uniform motion. Now we know that here the graph is parabola ST graph and this is for uniformly accelerated motion. Look at this VT graph. Again, it is a straight line inclined to time axis. So, equal changes in velocity take place in equal intervals of time. And this is the definition for a body in uniformly accelerated motion. So, this VT graph is for uniformly accelerated motion. This is also a VT graph and here also it is inclined. So equal changes in velocity takes place in equal intervals of time. So this graph is also for uniformly accelerated motion. The only difference between these two is that the body starts from rest. Here when we start a time, the body is already having certain velocity. It means it's already in motion. So we have seen that we, from the graphs, in the previous video we have seen how to draw the graphs for Rest, uniform motion, uniformly accelerated motion. Three types of graph we have seen. ST, VT and AT. Now in this video, now we have seen if graphs are drawn, from the graphs we can judge, we can say that what kind of motion a body is having. Okay, so this is the first use of graph that from the graph, from the nature of curve or graph, we can say the kind of motion that the body is having. Now secondly, I may have graph here, but I may not know that at any intermediate time, what is the distance traveled. Now first use, we have seen uses of graph. What is the first use? That from the graph, we can tell about the nature of motion that the body is having. Whether it is at rest or uniform motion or uniformly accelerated motion or maybe non-uniformly accelerated motion. Now second use, let us see here. Suppose I don't know at time t1, what is the value of distance covered? But I have the graph. 
So I can drop a perpendicular from T1 on time axis and make it intersect the graph and at the point of intersection I can drop a perpendicular on distance axis and the point where this perpendicular meets distance axis will give me the distance travelled in time T1. Similarly here if I have VT graph at any time T following the same pattern I can find out the body's velocity at any time T1. Okay. So second use is that from the graph I can find out the distance covered at any time or velocity covered, velocity of a body at any time during the motion. Now let us try to achieve the first learning outcome. What does slope of ST graph give? In the previous video we have seen the slope or gradient has a formula y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. Now if the graph is ST graph, slope will be y. What is plotted along y axis for ST graph? S, distance traveled. And along x axis, time. So instead of y2, y1, I can write for ST graph, slope is equal to S2 minus S1 divided by T2 minus T1. S2 minus S1 will be distance traveled in time interval T2 minus T1. So S2 minus S1 divided by T2 minus T1 gives me what? Distance traveled in unit time and that is nothing but speed of a body. So ST graph, slope of ST graph gives a speed or magnitude of velocity when the motion is along a straight line. If I use a word, what does the slope of distance time graph gives? Speed of a body. Displacement time graph gives velocity, magnitude of velocity of a body. Now let us see for VT graph, what does the slope give? For VT graph, again slope is equal to y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. But for VT graph, what is plotted along y-axis, speed or velocity? And along x axis time. So instead of y2, y1, I can write v2, v1, and instead of x2, x1, I can write t2, t1. So slope of vt graph is equal to v2 minus v1 upon t2 minus t1. v2 minus v1 is change in velocity in time interval t2 minus t1. So change in velocity divided by time during which the change has taken place gives us what? change in velocity in unit time and that is nothing but acceleration. We already know that. So overall we can say what does slope of ST graph gives? It gives us speed or magnitude of velocity. What does slope of VT graph give? It gives us magnitude of acceleration. Hope you have understood these two learning outcomes, you have achieved them. Now let us move to the last learning outcome. What does area under VT graph give? Now to find this area under VT graph, what does it give? Let us consider VT graphs as shown below. We will concentrate only on this VT graph and generalize the result for other also. Now this is a VT graph and the graph is straight line parallel to time axis which means that value of speed remains constant with time. We know it is the graph of for a body where speed remains constant. It means it is for a case of uniform motion. Now area under VT graph to get that area. This is the graph. Area under VT graph means this graph. Okay. Now to get the area under this graph what I have done. I have drop the perpendicular from this edge of the graph on the time axis with this dotted line and I have shaded this area. So this is now area under the graph and I can more precisely say area under the graph and above the time axis. Although area under VT graph will always we will consider area under the graph above the time axis. So this shaded portion now looks like a rectangle. And we know area of a rectangle is length into breadth. So this is a time axis. If I consider this value as t and this value as v because it is a velocity or speed axis. 
So area of this shaded portion will be length into breadth will be V into T because this length is T and this is V. So it will be V into T. But we know that V speed is distance upon time. So distance will be V into T. Along a straight line, remember that we can consider V as magnitude of velocity also and S as magnitude of displacement also. Now S is V into T. Here area is V into T. It means area under VT graph gives us S. So in other words, area under VT graph gives distance covered or magnitude of displacement covered. Now here I have considered the entire area. So during the entire motion in this time t I have got the distance traveled. Suppose if I draw this dotted line here then I get the area in this time interval. Area sorry distance covered in this time interval by shading only this part. Okay. So this is the final use that we have to accept although we have proved it for uniform motion. Now I'll generalize that it is valid for all VT graphs whatever the motion of the body may be. For example, if you consider this, this is a VT graph, straight line inclined to time axis passing through a region. We know here that this is a graph for uniformly accelerated motion because velocity is changing by equal amounts in equal intervals of time and the body starts from rest. Here also it is straight line inclined to time axis. So the body is again in uniformly accelerated motion but it is already having certain value of speed when the time started means it was already in motion. Here also I can get the distance covered in the same way. What I can do is I can drop a perpendicular from this edge on time axis and or in this case I can drop a perpendicular from this, this point on the time axis. So in this case, if we see this, area under the VT graph is in the triangular shape. So area of this triangle, that is half into base into height, half into base is T and into height is V. So obviously this area will give me half of this area and this will be the distance covered in this time interval for a body in uniformly accelerated motion. In this case, if the body is already having certain value of velocity, then this area, we can see this area is having the shape of trapezium. See, the two sides are parallel. One pair of sides is parallel and the other pair is not parallel. So, this area forms the shape of trapezium. So, either I can find out area of this trapezium by using the formula of trapezium, you know it. What is the formula to find the area of trapezium? Half into bracket sum of length of parallel sides, this, this parallel sides, into perpendicular distance between the two parallel sides, that is this. So knowing the formula for area of trapezium, if this initial speed is denoted by u and the final speed is denoted by v, I can see the length of this parallel side is u and the length of this parallel side is v and the height or perpendicular distance between the two parallel sides is t. So if we know the formula for area of trapezium, we can write area is equal to half into u plus v into t. By knowing this area, I can find out the distance covered in this time interval t when the body is in uniformly accelerated motion in this case. You can also do one thing. In suppose if you don't remember uh, the formula to find the area of trapezium, what you can do is, see this shaded region can be divided into two parts. One is this rectangular part and one is this triangular part. You can find out the area of rectangle plus area of triangle, add them, again the answer will be same. It means that will give you the total uh, area shaded under this graph and that will be equal to distance traveled by the body in uniformly accelerated motion. Hope you have achieved these three learning outcomes. We have seen more uses of graphs today. Let us revise. We have seen that from the graph, we can tell about the nature of motion that the body is having. 
Secondly, we can find out the distance travelled at any in any time interval during the motion or we can find out instantaneous value of speed that is value of speed at any instant during the motion or we can have these uses also. What the slope of ST graph gives? Speed, speed or magnitude of velocity. What the slope of VT graph gives? Magnitude of acceleration. And what does area under VT graph gives? Area under VT graph gives distance covered or magnitude of displacement. Students, you should understand these uses properly, especially these three learning outcomes. Then only the next part of the chapter, which is considered to be very important, will be easier for you. Revise this and try to make the concepts clear. Thank you.